West Hill United is a progressive spiritual community where how you live is more important than what you believe. West Hill United is a people, a place, an idea. We are a community living out of a progressive faith, striving to make a positive difference in our own lives, the lives of others, and the world. Join us Sundays at 10.30 a.m. or connect with us at any time. Thank you, Babette and everyone for singing in, and thank you, for Mike, for your heartfelt TED Talk. Dr. Brene Brown, who was the creator of the video that you saw last week in, uh, in the, on the uh, session on, on um, empathy, and she is also the, the writer of the, today's readings. She's particularly known for her research on shame, vulnerability, and leadership. And she's also known for having one of the most widely watched TED Talks. I know she also does a podcast because I often hear Anne, I, I, I recognize Brene's voice because Anne's got that podcast on almost every, well, every week anyway, somewhere in the house. So he, these are Brene Brown's words on empathy. Empathy is a choice and it's a vulnerable one. She goes on to say, empathy has no script. There is no right way or wrong way to do it. It's simply listening, holding space, withholding judgment, and emotionally connecting and communicating that incredibly healing message of you are not alone. It's compassion that helps us make the connection with others, helps us mend relationships and move forward while also fostering emotional intelligence and well-being. Compassion takes empathy one step further because it harbors a desire for all people to be free from suffering and it's imbued with a desire to help. In the following passages she reveals how she connects empathy and compassion with the healing from shame and how it is all dependent on our willingness to be vulnerable. <clears throat> We desperately don't want to experience shame. And we're not really willing to talk about it. Yet the only way to resolve shame is to talk about it. Vulnerability is the core of shame and fear and our struggle for worthiness. But it appears that it is also the birthplace of joy, of creativity, of belonging, of love. If you could put shame in a petri dish, it really only needs three ingredients to grow exponentially. Secrecy, silence, and judgment. If you put the same amount of shame in a petri dish and douse it with empathy, it can't survive. Vulnerability is the source of hope, accountability, and authenticity. If we want greater clarity in our purpose or deeper and more meaningful spiritual lives, vulnerability is the path offered as wisdom for the journey. May we walk, May we walk in its light. Thank you, Kevin, for reading clearly and with heart. I just want to connect the other part of the heart from what Mike was sharing with us, and the idea was empathy last week. And Brene Brown and so many other writers, you know, link it to empathy for yourself understanding compassion for yourself and they call it self-compassion and there's a whole bunch of writing that says no 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 you've got to be hard on yourself you've got to be able to criticize yourself and the other researchers say yes absolutely but if you don't do it from a place of compassion for yourself you'll never move on to something healthier so self-compassion is being empathic is understanding is noticing yourself very hard to do because you're in it 
but noticing yourself the same way you'd notice a friend who was going through something. And you'd wonder, what, what are they going through? I want to care about that. So noticing that yourself is going through something, noticing that I am experiencing something, I'm noticing that I'm experiencing, and I'm embracing that. And the best reason I can embrace myself, no matter how difficult, no matter how I've let myself down, I've let someone else down, I know that I'm part of this great big human family, and every single other one in the family has done very much the same thing. That's where we're broken and healing all the time. So I'm part of this big family. I'll embrace myself and then find the bridge to the next part of my life. One of the places that um, empathy for self and others takes place is in my workplace, which is long-term care. And I'm just... Uh, Two books have been put out about uh, managing the journey of either you in long-term care, and remember long-term care where I work is age 18 and up. We have people in their 30s, in their 40s, in their 50s in long-term care. And one book is called Managing the Emotional Journey of Long-Term Care, whether it's you or the one you love. And the book was followed by this. I don't know if you can see it, but recipe for empathy without the empathy you'll never get through that, that journey i have a, a a co-worker i hadn't seen her for a long time because she was off she came back and we had a huddle together about a really gnarly situation and she handled it really beautifully as she always does and we talked after because i knew that she had had a heart attack and she's in her 40s and it completely surprised her, completely surprised, no symptom beforehand, and she had this heart attack. She describes it in, in the shock that she was having uh, as she was having it, and then the, the diagnosis. And she told me about, and then maybe you've had this, or maybe you know someone who has had this, but they unblocked a 98% blocked artery in her through her wrist. So they put, they put a, the doctor says the only pain you're going to feel here is the prick of the needle going in and so in it went for her wrist now this is her name her name is Tammy and she's happy for me to share this she the the, the 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 prick went in and she said I felt something moving up my arm I felt it moving up my arm she's strange she has to be awake right don't know why I don't remember why but she had to be awake and and up it went and she said I could feel so someone was in me I was feeling the inside of me, which we don't usually feel, but I was linking that with empathy, right? To be able to see yourself, to be able to say, I'm a, I'm a, there's an inside of me. And up it went, and up, up her shoulder, and she felt it, she, and she felt it stopped at her heart. And she felt her heart, she felt her heart. And whatever they did then, it started getting warmer and warmer. And she said, I felt my heart warming. <laughs> I felt my heart warming. She said, she looked, she said, everyone should have this experience of feeling your heart getting warmer and warmer. I thought that would be a really good thing to have on hand when you're with someone you really have difficulties with, or you could just put it in your arm, and then all of a sudden you'd be feeling much more likely to do some good with that. So I wanted to extend from last week, I, we showed those four pictures by Tyree Nichols, who's no longer with us in such a tragedy. Uh, of bridges and so Glenn has outfitted me with a foot pedal here and it will change the slide N yes okay so I have put some bridges together for you to look at and we're just going to mention them as starting from wherever you are and using empathy and care for yourself and for the other as you cross over to something new, something different. Now, some bridges are very easy. So that's my first picture. I don't see the screen. I, I, I don't need to as long, oh, there, there, no, I just, I do now. I, I have good peripheral vision. Okay, some bridges you'll have to cross are familiar to you. Is that a familiar bridge? That goes from the Eaton Center to the Bay in downtown Toronto. That's a familiar bridge. If you have to do something, you got to do it, but it's fairly familiar. That would be a familiar bridge. Oh. 
that short movie was about uh, well, other familiar bridges. What you saw flash by you was the bridge at Center Island. I love that little bridge that goes over one of the, one of the ponds there. And you see, you saw, oh, there was a thing. Can you do it from now on? Okay, I'll learn this, but not at the moment. Thank you. Good guys back there. That's the bridge at Center Island. The next bridge is the Golden Gate Bridge. That's a familiar bridge. If you're, you, you may not have been in it. I've, I've crossed it. But you may not, but it would be familiar enough that you know, okay, the way has been paved in this difficult situation. The next one is a stereoscopic view. Do you know that double thing you'd see of the Brooklyn Bridge as it's being built? And the last one, of course, is not London Bridge. It is not London Bridge. It is the Tower Bridge in London. It's just called the London Bridge, and it hasn't fallen down yet. The next kind of bridge, if we're going to have to do something, we could be on the next picture. No, so next I'll just say next. That is the longest covered bridge in the world. And you may have been there in, the, in, the, in the New, New Brunswick. And it's called the Heartland Bridge. And, and we sometimes have to go from where we are to someplace else, to someone else, to a difficulty through a long and covered bridge. It's dark. As soon as we go in, the next picture shows the entranceway. And what's in there? I don't know, but I might have to go. I might have to reach into that situation. The next picture shows sometimes there's so many things we have to do that there's too many bridges, and we have to start picking which one we want to work on. But that's the truth. And, and, and right, right now, and I'm sure you have exactly the same thing, there's something I need to handle that I'm avoiding handling. I really am. It's difficult. It's, it's, it's daunting to me, and I need to launch into it. And it feels like that too many bridges and a long covered bridge. And there's other things I know, okay, I can do that, but I can't get to it yet. The can't, I can, but I say that. The next thing is in the nighttime, a bridge in the nighttime. I did this on purpose. I made it very small. It's, a, it's just a bridge lit up in the dark, and sometimes we have to find that light. I need to handle something. I need to the next one is beautiful lit up in the nighttime. That is a bridge in uh, India, and the design was inspired by kites. And so it's lifting you and lighting you the way to the next challenge you have to do. Now, there's sometimes you feel, I'm trying on this situation. I'm trying to learn this. I'm trying to handle a difficult emotional situation. I'm trying to handle the diagnosis I just got. I'm trying to handle the diagnosis my loved one just got. I'm trying to handle this situation with the person that I love, but things are not going well. And that the next bridge, it, it's, is that the next bridge? You're quite right, it's the next bridge. The, this is called the London Millennium Bridge. It's across the Thames River. 2,000 people a day cross it, but it's also called the Wobbly Bridge. When they built it with the expertise that only architects can achieve, as soon as people started walking on it, the sway of the bridge, which was somewhat, people would start walking with the sway. And 2,000 people walking with the sway, it was swaying too much. And sometimes, we start walking in towards something and we start feeling our feet shake or our, our, our whole body saying, this isn't good, I'm not ready for this, I can't do this. And so empath empathy for self. So it's like, okay, back up a little, just back up, okay? Hang onto the rails, ask for someone, run back to the start again and think how you could do this better empathically. The next, the next slide is, it might be a little hard to see. The bridge starts on the far shore that you can see and it ends up looking like it ends in the middle of the lake. Sometimes we think we get halfway through a situation. I've tried, I've tried with this person, I've tried, and it's not getting anywhere. I have to decide, do I keep doing this? Do I keep doing this now? Do I wait? Do I get resources? Or do I find a way to keep going? And the way to keep going with that bridge is, as soon as you get to that, where it looks in the middle, it becomes a tunnel, and you go right under, and you keep going. Amazing kind of structure. But it looks that you're not getting anywhere, and maybe you are. And then there's a bridge in the next picture in Europe of a very, I don't know if you could see that, it's a very tricky bridge. I am petrified of heights. I try to work on that. Kevin said he used to be, and then he got a job. I don't know why you got a job that required you to be in heights when you're afraid of it, but I, I applaud that. But the, a bridge over something you never thought you could ever do. 
I never thought I'd change my beliefs to where they are now. I never thought I would see people differently and I was judgmental before and now I, I never thought I would. It was never a bridge could be built there. And it, and it did. It helped. People helped me build the bridge. Sometimes people come to you in your life and say, uh, here's some stones. You need to do this. You need to start building a bridge here. I, I live with someone that's very good at reminding, where I need to, reminding me where I need to build a bridge. And we do that for each other and, of course, for friends and everything. But it's okay if someone comes towards you very gently and says, here's a brick. <laughs> here's a brick. The next one, you're building a bridge towards something difficult and the storm hits, and the lightning hits, and it's hard. And maybe you need to hunker down, and maybe you just need to keep going. Maybe you need to put a raincoat on. Maybe you need to do something to say, I'm committed to this, I'm gonna see it through, but boy, it's raining hard. The next, one, next picture is uh, happening a lot these days is even right up to the bridge, you're feeling wet, you're feeling, should I go on? Empathizing with yourself, I, say, I need to wait, I need to rest. I need, to get, I, need to put, I, I need to put galoshes on. I need to do something differently. Maybe I need to run back to the start and wait till the storm's over. Maybe. And if I lose out by doing that, I also need to be empath empathic with myself and say, okay, that one didn't work. That one didn't work. Same for the whole human family of things that didn't work, and I'll try again. The next picture is... If you're familiar with it, it almost looked like um, Nova Scotia or New Brunswick, but this is California. That was a bridge, a stone bridge. It was quite the iconic scene in, in California. And then a tremendous storm hit, and the next picture, gone. And sometimes we were hoping for a chance to do something about something, and we waited for all the reasons we can have, and there it's not there anymore. And I would like to, 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 to title those, it could be the feeling of regret. I'm so sorry I lost out on that. It wasn't there for me when I wanted. Now, the other thing is, it could be a good thing. It could be, oh, good. <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm going to go on to something different. Because sometimes when a bridge collapses or we burn a bridge, it's not a bad thing. There's all sorts of human things that go on with this. The next one, the next picture, shows a very old lock bridge. Now, that looks broken, doesn't it? That looks like a broken bridge. But it's not a broken bridge, it's a bridge that's lifted up to let something else go through. Now sometimes, that's a big interruption for you. I didn't want that to happen, I didn't want it to stop now and let something else happen. Fair. But it also could be you lift up and you think, oh, oh, I'm actually now seeing my way differently because of something that got added to it. So that flexibility that says I'll notice how I'm feeling and I'll embrace it because I'm Part of the human family, and then I'll go on. I love this next. I think I would have been scared if I came across this one at night. For those of you that maybe are on the phone, this is a bridge being held up by somebody. A, a concrete hand has been built to hold it. I love that picture because I could do it two ways. I could say, you know, to, to, to so, someone else, I'll, 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 I'll help, I'll help. Let me, let me hold you the bridge a bit while you do let me I got some ideas that might help you I got some ideas that might drive you crazy and you'll ask me to stop but I'm, I'm here and so that holding up the bridge and it could also be that you're holding me up you've done that people you've held me up in difficult situations you're doing it now I'm doing it with you there's people not here we're holding up or they're they're holding us and the next picture is even more beautiful because someone got the idea let's do it together let's hold them each other up together with the with the, I'd love to drive through and, and, and feel the fingers around me. And so I, I thought, I'm going to hang on to that picture the next time I am wondering whether I can keep going on the bridge. So I'm going to ask you just to leave the last slide on for a moment, the next last slide, which is just a lovely footbridge in Monteverdi. And I'm just going to wrap up the idea of, of empathy. So I want to travel, and I'm going to put it in terms of me, so you can be doing the same thing or, or not but so if i'm going to be compassionate with myself and i know there's a bridge i've got to cross from something i don't know yet to something i need to know or from something i think i know completely about but if i cross the bridge towards something else i'm gonna it's gonna change i'm gonna see it differently and that could be a very good thing and it could be a very hard thing 
or it's a bridge or something I, I've wanted to do and I've always chickened out on myself or I've neglected or I push it back. I, I procrastinate. I procrastinate like a genius. When, when I don't know how to do something, it floats right to the back of my head and nestles in there where I can't see it at all until somebody I love brings it a little in my, what's supposed to be excellent peripheral village vision um, and, and I see it. But if, if, if to, to something I need to do to take those first steps, sh give me a brick. <laughs> Come alongside me and give me a brick. And then, and then ask, who can I ask to stand with me at, this, at the front when I don't even build the bridge yet? Who can I ask to stand with me and say, could you just stand with me? I got to do this. I might, even tell, I might not even tell you what it is. It might be so personal, I can't tell you. But I'm going through something, I want you to stand with me. And then I'll start walking and I'll turn back and say, you're still there? You're still there? Okay, you're still there. And, 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 and keep walking and I might not turn back, I might just keep going. But I might stand in the middle of the bridge and say, could you come with me? Just a little, could you just walk with me a little bit? Well, first time I ever took my daughters to the Ontario place, um, the big, it used to be the big globe where you'd watch the big, big screen theater. Well, we walked in uh, and we must have got up to it on an elevator. And, and then when we went to get out, they put you out another section and you were way up in the air above water on steps that you could see through. So I opened the door like that with my two children, I'm a brave dad, and opened the door and just stood there, couldn't move, couldn't move an inch. And two little girls grabbed me by the hand and we went step by step down with me looking up and, and we, we handled it. And they've always, they've always, they, we helped daddy, we, we helped daddy with it, I love that. I, I still would need you to do that with me, by the way. I haven't gotten any better. So who can I ask to be present with me? What can I take with me that will help me? What, what, do, what do I know now that I can use to cross over into something that's quite frightening for me, but I want to do it? So from isolation to connection, from fear to just a little more confidence in something, from sadness to just a little more comfort, from feeling overwhelmed to getting some peace, from being confused to being less confused. And then I wanted to just end with saying, there are people all over our planet that are trying to build a bridge to something. And whereas my needs, my basic needs are met, so I'm looking to build bridges that are for relationships or for, dip, for, for work, professional, for skills. But there are people wanting to build a bridge to food. There are people wanting to build a bridge to warmth or coolness, whatever they're the extreme is. It's people wanting to build a bridge to just some freedom to be who they are without being uh, uh, oppressed or chastised. So the question I ask, how can I help that? How can I, help, how can I see myself as crossing a bridge with them, helping them cross a bridge towards? And that's a real beautiful thing to celebrate. So empathy, Brene Brown's words, bore into my heart this week about building a bridge towards with you, with those that uh, I work with, with those that I love, to be someplace different, more healthy, more uh, stronger, uh, more able to handle things than I was before. So bridge. Bye bye. Become a sustaining champion of West Hill United's work by committing to an automatic monthly donation. Learn more or donate now through Canada Helps.